Can Microsoft 365 offer your business cyber awareness training? Can Microsoft 365 offer your business simulated phishing attacks? Yes, it can. And in this video, I'm going to explain exactly why you should be using those. Plus, I'll give you a demo. But before we start, a quick introduction as always. My name is Jonathan Edwards, and I've got a business called Integral IT. We support businesses all over the world with the Microsoft 365 and the cybersecurity. Now, one of the best ways that you can protect your business today from becoming the victim of a cyber attack is to offer all of your team cyber awareness training and simulated phishing attacks. Now, the weakest link in every business's cybersecurity journey will always be the people who are using the computers, especially if those people aren't cyber awareness trained. How do those people know what a phishing email looks like? How do those people know what ransomware is and how it gets into your business? How do those people know what identity theft is? Well, they don't. And it's your job as a business leader to make sure that they're trained. Fortunately, if you're a Microsoft 365 user, you can use a feature called the Attack Simulator. And don't worry, it's not as scary as it sounds. With the Attack Simulator, you can send people in your business simulated phishing emails. For example, you might send them an email perpetrating from Bing from Amazon, offering them a free gift card. All they have to do is click on the link and enter their Amazon username and password. Or maybe it's an email pretending to be from American Express or Capital One, telling that person that they've reached the credit limit and they need to log in to increase the credit limit. All they have to do is enter the credentials. And of course, these simulated phishing emails from Microsoft are just that, they're simulated. So if anybody in your business does click on a link and does enter the credentials, they're not gonna get hacked. But what will happen is they'll be offered cyber awareness training. Slowly, over time, you can start to build up your team's ability to combat phishing emails. So in a moment, we're gonna hop onto that computer behind me and I'm gonna show you the attack simulator in Microsoft 365. But before I do, let's talk about the all important licensing. Now the attack simulator in Microsoft 365 is available in a product called Defender for Office 365 Plan 2. And this costs four pound 10 per user per month. Now, if you're a Microsoft 365 Business Premium user, which we always advise that our customers are, unfortunately, that only includes Defender for Office 365 Plan 1. So you'd have to buy Plan 2 as an upgrade. Now, Defender for Office 365 Plan 2 doesn't just include the attack simulator. It includes some advanced email security products. You can also buy the attack simulator in the enterprise versions of Microsoft 365. But without further ado, let's hop onto that computer behind me and I will show you the attack simulator in 365. So firstly, how do we access the attack simulator in Microsoft 365? Well, you've got to be logged into 365 as an admin. So I've logged into the 365 portal here and I've got an admin account. And I know that because I've got this little admin tab here. So if I click on there to launch it, it'll take me into the 365 admin center. So the first thing I do is just go down here to show all, and we want to be in the security admin center. So I'll launch that now. Now, once I'm into the security center, what I need to do is scroll down here to email and collaboration. And what I want is the attack simulation training. So I'll click on that. Now this first page is an overview and I'm gonna circle back to that later. But the tab that I want to start on is the one called simulation. So I'll click on there. Now you can see I've got an attack simulation that I created earlier. That's just called JE test. But to launch a new simulation, I just simply click on here, launch a simulation. Now we've got to choose the technique we want to use. Now don't be overwhelmed here because with each technique, it tells you exactly what it is. So for example, the credential harvest. In this technique, we are sending a phishing email 
with a simple URL. And we're wanting that user to click on that URL and that will take them to another page. On that page, we're asking them to enter a username and password. So we are harvesting their credentials. We've also got some other techniques, a malware attachment where we're sending a user an attachment and we're wanting them to click on that attachment. And we've got various other things as well that we can use. In this example, I'm going to stick with the top one, the credential harvest. And once I've done that, I simply click on next. Now we need to name the simulation. You can call this whatever you want, but make sure it's descriptive. I'll call it credential harvest July 2023. I can also, also enter a description if I want to. Then I click on next. So on this page, we've got to choose the payload that we want to send to our end users as a test. So we've got the name of it, we've got the language, and we've also got the predicted compromise. And if you want to look at how these look, you can simply just click on it here, and it'll show you what message that this user is gonna get. So this is an Office 365 one. So if a user gets this, it's basically they think Office 365 is trying to send them some messages and they can't. So they attempted to click on this link here and enter their 365 username and password. And when they do, it means the hacker has got those details. So we can click there. And also something to know is when we tick one of these boxes here, you'll notice send a test appears at the top. So we can actually send a test, which will send a test to the admin account that we're logged in as. So if I just hop over to my mailbox, you can see that that has arrived. So that is a test one sent to my mailbox. And also what you can do if you want is you can create your own payload. If you don't like the look of any of these, you can create your own to make it more bespoke for your business. And when you click on there, it just takes you through a little wizard. But for the purpose of this demo, we're gonna just choose one of these. And I'm gonna choose this two failed messages because I think it's, it's a good one. Once I'm happy with that, I can click on next. Now on this page, we want to choose the target users. So there's two options. We can just send this to everyone in our organization and everyone in the business will get this. Or we can include specific users or specific groups. So we could say, I want to send this one to the finance team because I think they're more at risk. For my example, I'm gonna choose only specific users and I'm gonna add a user in here. Now we've got a user in our business called Phil Fish. Phil's a lovely guy, but unfortunately, he always clicks on phishing emails. So we're gonna send in this test. So we choose Phil and we click on add user. Once we're happy that everyone is in this list, we simply click on next. Now on this page, we can exclude users. So why would we have this page? Well, in the previous page, if we'd have selected everyone in our business, it's easier than on this page, choose us to exclude one or two people if we don't want those to receive the attack simulator. I'm not gonna choose that, I'm gonna click on next. Now we're at the point where we need to assign training. So after we've sent Phil Fish this simulated phishing email, if he falls for it, then he's gonna be assigned training to make sure it doesn't happen again. When it comes to training preferences, we've got three options. Firstly, we can choose no training. So we can say, even if Phil Fish clicks on this link, we're not gonna offer him any training. Now you might use this if you just want to get a gauge for people in your business who are clicking on links. The next bit is you can redirect to a custom URL. So maybe you want to offer your own training rather than the Microsoft training. Maybe you create your own cyber awareness videos in your business that you want your users to watch. So you could redirect to a custom URL on your website. Or the recommended one is the Microsoft training experience. So I'm gonna set it as that. Then you've got another couple of options. You can let Microsoft assign the training for you based on what links Phil Fish or whoever in your business has clicked on those links have clicked on. Or you can select the training courses and modules yourself. I'm gonna to stick to the default of assigned training for me, and then we need to choose the due date. So when is this training due? We've got a few options. We've got a week after the simulation ends, 15 days or 30. I'm gonna set this to seven days because actually if someone clicks on a link, I want them to get trained 
immediately. Click on next. Now we need to choose the fish landing page. So what is this? Well, this is the page that someone will be directed to if they click on the link in the training email. So again, we've got a couple of options. Microsoft have a library of five pages you can choose from, or you can use a custom URL. Again, if you want to manage it internally, create a page on your own website, you can do that. I'm just gonna look at a few of these templates. So this one is the first one. I'll just click on there, highlight it, go into it. So the user will be directed to this. So it'll say, Phil Fish, you were just fished by your security team. It's okay, you human, let's learn from this. So this is really good. And it'll show him the email that he's fallen victim to as well. So he'll realize what has happened. Then at the bottom, it'll say, we've assigned you some training, go to the training or add it to calendar. So that's a nice page for him to receive. We can change the language, etc. So I'm gonna stick with that page. Again, if we wanna put our own logo on there, we can do. Click on next. Now we've got some additional options when it comes to notifications, okay? So the first one is do not deliver them. The second one is the Microsoft default ones. Now we've got three of those in here. So the first one, let's have a look at it, is called the Microsoft Default Positive Reinforcement. We click on Actions. Now, what is this email? This is saying it will be Phil Fish. Thank you for reporting a phishing email. Okay, if you look in your Outlook and you open an email, so if I open this one, the test one was sent earlier, on every email, you will see a report tab here. So if you get an email and you think it's phishing, you can report it as a phishing email. If you do that, and Microsoft knows it's a phishing email, then what it will do, it'll send you this. And it's just a positive reinforcement. Thank you for reporting a fish. So what we're doing with users is we're sending them a simulated email. They can either fall victim to it or report it as phishing. And if they do report it as phishing, they'll get this positive reinforcement. I think that's a nice thing to do. So again, delivery preferences. We can do not deliver. We can deliver after the simulation ends or during simulation. I will click on that one. And then this is the default training and assignment. So again, click on there. And this is just basically saying, Phil Fish, you've been assigned this training. Okay, so we want to have that one. And then if the user is a bit naughty and they don't do the training, we can send them a reminder. So it's just a reminder telling them that they have training assigned. So again, I will send this I'm going to send it twice a week because I think it's really important. Or the third option, we can choose our own. Okay, so if you want to send your own bespoke emails, you can do that as well. Click on next. And then we've got the launch details. So when do we want to launch this simulation? Well, we can launch it straight away. But maybe you're setting these simulations up for further down the line, every Monday or something like that. So you can click on schedule this simulation to be launched after. And then how long will this simulation go on for? How many days? You can choose that there. And a nice little option, you can enable region aware time zone delivery. So if you've got offices around the world, you can send these simulations in line with their time zones, okay? Then click on next. And again, at the end here, we can send a test just so we're happy with it, or we can submit it and that simulation will be configured. So once that's done, you'll get this confirmation here. Then you can simply click on done. And then you can see this is now in the list here. So I think it's a good time to head over to Phil Fisher's mailbox to see if he's received anything. Okay, so open it up here. Oh, he's got a message here from Office 365. And it's telling him that there's some messages due to his inbox and there's a bit of a problem. So he needs to look at these. So he's gonna click on here. And then it's going to ask him for his username and password. Well, he needs to enter this because he wants to, to have a look at what's going on. So click on next. Now it's asking for his password. We'll just copy that in there. Click sign in. Oh, this has happened. Phil Fish, you've just been fished by your security team. How unfortunate. So it's okay, we're human. And it's going to tell him the message is clicked on which is, is fallen victim to. And then at the bottom, it's asking him to do some training. So let's click on there. 
you can see that he's been assigned some training and it's all about fishing. So he's been fished and now he's been assigned some training on how he can avoid fishing. I'm just going to pause that, pause that because it's quite loud. But you can see the type of training it is. It's done in like a cartoon fashion. And hopefully at the end of this training, he's got a few questions to answer. And hopefully he won't fall victim to the another fishing attack in the future. Okay. So we'll just close out of those. We'll go back to Phil's mailbox. And you can see here, there's those follow-up follow emails that we, we set uh, and some reminders to do that. Okay. And it, should, 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 it just says... The training should take about three minutes. So it's not going to take a lot out of Phil's day. So let's just hop back to the 365 admin and I'll show you what else we have in the ATAP simulation. We've got training. So what does this mean? Well, we can create campaigns. So what's a campaign? Well, if we create on new, I will explain. A good campaign could be something like a new starter. Okay. You've got someone new joining your business and you can select that user so if i just select phil fish again from here and i'll put him into that add user click on next exclude users again we've been through that and what we can do here we can select the training modules that we want to assign to this these people in this training campaign so you can see here here's all the training that is offered by microsoft we've got a lot of different things here we can give people an introduction to information security. We can choose different training campaigns that we want every user to go through. Maybe this campaign might be called quarterly refresh and it's sent to everybody in the business. A new starter, someone getting promoted to a new position might need additional training. So that is what a training campaign is. We can simply click on that. You get your notifications again and it's a similar type of thing. You choose the schedule, okay? So that is a campaign. And then the next option is an automation. So an automation, if we click on there, is lots of different techniques, payloads, all happening at once. So if I click on test here, click on next, we can say we want a mix of all these. So it's different techniques, different payloads. We can randomize, Microsoft can choose how it's done. So that is a bit more automated rather than manually doing it as with the other ones. So that's another good option within the attack simulator. Again, the only other things to show you, we've got a contact li a content library, sorry, and that tells you, we've been through most of these, but we've got the payloads, we've got the training modules. So if we just click on refresh there. So here's all the training modules. What we can do, we've got 88 classes. So these are all really good information for people to get them trained in cyber awareness. And you simply, you can click into any of these and you can look at a preview of the training. So that's it. That's the attack simulator in Microsoft 365. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Training your team with cyber awareness training is one of the most important things that you can do in your business. It strengthens up your defenses. I look forward to seeing you again soon.